A very warm welcome to all of you to our daily current affairs videos. I hope you all are doing good and your preparation is on the track. To add to your preparation, Anu Jingal sir has launched a 60 day RBI grade B course for you all and you will get a lot of help if you join this program. It is a crash course and it will provide you with all the basics that you need including a personalized study plan a pre comprehensive preparation kit that includes your previous questions analysis all right so just go to the website check out the features of your course and you will definitely be very happy with your results it will channel your hard work in the right direction all right so before starting today's current affairs videos let me clarify a small doubt regarding yesterday's current affairs videos which is regarding uh, which uh, relates to austria's uh, austria's chancellor austria's chancellor as pointed out by you guys very very correctly is kurt nehammer all right at present he is the chancellor of austria but before this the chancellor of austria was christian kern and why did i mention him why because in the year 2017 modi ji and mr christian kern attended a saint petersburg international economic forum at saint petersburg russia which was a milestone step towards indo austrian relationship all right but Please note down that presently uh, the uh, Chancellor of Austrian is Kern Nehammer. All right. So moving on to the very first question of the day, we have at which power plant of NTPCs India's first green hydrogen-based energy storage being developed? All right. You have options: Ramagunda power plant, uh, Simhadri plant, Korba plant, Farakka plant, and Singroli plant. Please answer the question correctly okay so the correct answer we have here is simhadri plant which is situated in telangana right it has been set up by national thermal power cooperation limited's renewable energy limited branch which is also known as ntpc rel all right let's know more about it uh, simhadri plant is a hydrogen based energy storage project right so it is basically what it is a micro grid storage project a micro grid storage project will substantially enhance India's decarbonizing mission, right? So decarbonizing basically means to reduce all the gaseous carbon emitting substances in the air, right? To minimize it, to use alternatives, to use renewables and hydrogen energy is one of the biggest initiatives of this plant, all right? With a 50 kilowatt of micro grid capacity. It is, it is being developed by NTPC Simhadri plant in Vizag region, right? And how will it produce? First of all, it will produce hydrogen by sourcing plants from Ramagundan floating uh, power plant, which is also all set up by NTPC. Ramagundan floating solar power plant is India's largest floating power plant. All right. And it will supply energy to, a mic to this micro grid grid uh, which will uh, use that energy to produce hydrogen right further this hydrogen that is that is produced it will further be transferred to solid oxide fuel cells solid oxide fuel cells or basically sofcs sofcs will uh, carry on an electrochemical process that will convert that hydrogen produced by this micro grid into electricity right hydrogen uh, produced by solid oxide fuel cells will be stored at a very very high pressure to enable their electrification all right so for all the non-science students uh, for whom this was a bit complicated i tried my level best to simplify it for you guys all right so ntpc has been awarded as a standalone fuel cell based 50 kilowatt micro grid pilot project all right of course it will also add to carbon neutral mission of india carbon india has aimed to become a carbon neutral country by the year 2070 all right so i leave it to you guys to write down what basically do you mean by carbon neutral all right does that mean zero emissions of carbon or does that mean some emissions of carbon which are offset by the renewable sources please i have already given you a hint enough but search about it learn about it enhance your knowledge and know what basically the term carbon neutral economy means all right 
so you have the stand alone fuel cell it will help in decarbonizing mission it will help in carbon neutral project right another very important initiative by ntpc is that it has also signed an mou it has also signed an mou with the union territory of ladakh union territory of ladakh to uh, ensure green mobility to ensure green mobility based on hydrogen based energy hydrogen based fuel all right moving on to the next slide we have which of the following airports is hosting the wings india 2022 all right you have options raipur airport begumpet airport visakhapatnam airport tirupati airport or chennai airport please answer correctly isko jaldi se answer kar dijiye iska correct answer is begumpet airport in hyderabad all right so wings india asia ka sabse bada aviation mission hai all right wings india is the largest aviation conference of asia it is uh, organized by ministry of civil aviation and federation of a uh, federation of industry Ch chambers of commerce of india or fiki all right it it is uh, being organized at begumpet airport and the theme of the program is india at 75 new horizon for aviation industry all right so very important fact here is that after us and china india is the third largest aviation market india is the third largest aviation market in terms of what domestic business and commercial aviation all right we also have udan regional connectivity scheme udan regional connectivity scheme basically aims to uh help uh, everyone use the aviation the domestic aviation facilities that are available in the country uh, through uh, brownfield and greenfield infrastructure projects hamare country mein aviation sector ko aur bhi zyada promote karne ka ek bahut hi important scheme hai which was launched in the year 2016 right it connects over 62 airports uh, with 387 routes all right including six helicopters and two water aerodromes so it is a very very important event please note it down and moving on to the next slide we have set up to end tb world tb day summit which was organized by union ministry union health ministry on the occasion of world tb day world tb day of course is being celebrated on march 24th all right and this uh, summit is being organized by union health ministry now question is asking you who was the chief guest of this event all right so you have options anandi ben patel jagdish mukhi phagu chauhan anusuya yuki and bandaru datatre all right so union health minister dr mansukh mandaviya will inaugurate this event all right and the chief guest will be the governor of uttar pradesh shrimati anandin ben patel right and india's target is to eliminate uh, tuberculosis by the year 2025 which is 5 years ahead 5 years ahead of the sustainable development goal of the sustainable development goal to end tb globally by the year 2030 all right so it is very important some very important facts related to tb first of all what is tb it is a pulmonary infection right it lungs ka ek disease hai it is known as a pulmonary infection it is caused by myobacterium tuberculosis right iska person to person transmission hota hai through air which means that it is an airborne disease right so person to person transmission is present that is for sure all right so a very important thing to note down here is that uh, according to who india contributes to 27% of the global tb rates all right 27% of global tb rates is contributed by india uh, india's share of global tb rates is 27% and india's global share in multi, multi drug resistant tb rate that is your mdr tb it is 24% all right so it is very very important for india to curb down its uh, cases of tb as soon as possible and also uh, 
uh, an important government scheme was national national tb elimination program national tb elimination program was also launched in the year 1962 all right so i hope this was clear till now and in case you have any doubts you are most welcome to mention it down in the comments below all right so here the objective is to invest to ntb and save lives of course which indian state has recently announced to introduce carbon neutral farming methods all right so earlier we studied carbon decarbonization mission using high clean energy projects like solar uh, floating solar power plants we have uh, hydrogen uh, energy reserves all right now in farming also we want to go carbon neutral all right so there are many uh, new terms coming up uh, regarding carbon neutral methods we have carbon sequestration also carbon sequestration bhi kafi zyada news mein aata hai carbon neutral farming se hi ye directly related hai to chaliye aap jaldi se answer kariye which indian state has recently announced to introduce carbon neutral farming methods the correct answer here is kerala okay सो so, सबसे पहले जान लेते हैं कार्बन न्यूट्रल फार्मिंग होता क्या है केरला पहला स्टेट है ओके लेट्स गो विद द स्लाइड्स फर्स्ट इट इज टू इंट्रोड्यूस कार्बन न्यूट्रल फार्मिंग मेथड फॉर विच इट हैज सेट असाइड रुपीज सिक्स क्रोर्स इन 2022-23 बजट राइट इट इंटेंस टू रिड्यूस कार्बन एमिशन एंड स्टोर कार्बन इन द सॉइल और राइट सो स्टोरिंग कार्बन इन द सॉइल का ही मतलब होता है क्या कार्बन सीक्वेस्ट्रेशन इट बेसिकली मीन्स दैट वट एवर कार्बन दैट इज देयर इन द एयर इट इज रीकैप्चर्ड इन द सॉइल यू ऑल नो इन स्कूल यू मस्ट हैव स्टडीड अबाउट वाटर साइकिल यू मस्ट हैव स्टडीड अबाउट नाइट्रोजन साइकिल देर इज ऑल्सो अ थिंग नोन एज कार्बन साइकिल विच इज अ वेरी लॉन्ग टर्म साइकिल एंड कार्बन सीक्वेस्ट्रेशन बेसिकली मीन्स टू प्लांट such uh, crops plant such trees that can absorb carbon from the air and reduce the overall load of carbon dioxide in the air all right this is the very simple and a very basic method of carbon sequestration all right <coughs> so this is the news iske benefits kya kya honge how will it help it will not only reduce carbon dioxide in the air by the way of carbon sequestration but also it will uh, give financial incentive to the incentives to the farmer right financial incentives kaise milenge in the form of carbon credits all right farmers will get carbon credits as financial incentives number 1 and uh, secondly it will also improve soil health it will improve soil health it will help in nutrition retention it will help in nutrition retention and also prevent soil erosion prevent soil erosion all right so this was about carbon neutral farming method moving on to the i hope you all are enjoying the classes leave your feedbacks and comments down below you are very much encouraged to do that you know a student teacher relation is a two way thing right hamara ek cooperation hota hai sath mein we both mutually grow and learn together all right so your comments and feedback are very very valuable thank you so much first of all for watching my video till the end and thank you for the appreciation and the lovely comments all right so which of the following uts was the venue of gulf investment summit in 2022 right to kaun se union territory mein gulf invest investment summit ko conduct karawaya gaya please uh, answer the question okay so the correct answer is jammu and kashmir right gulf investment summit is a very important summit especially for jammu and kashmir because it will attract investments from gulf countries uh, and also some investments from hong kong all right investments include mous from private companies from uae saudi arabia all right and it will promote business it will promote tourism in the state 
in the Union Territory and it will also establish round the year air link between Jammu and Kashmir and UAE. All right, recently you have read in news that the Union budget has rupees 1.42 lakh crore sanction kiye hai for the development of the Union Territory. All right, so this was an important note. Aap sab log gai honge kabhi. Jammu and Kashmir, you must have visited Gulmag, you must have visited Srinagar. Very tourism, very high tourism potential in the state. We just need more private investments. We just need more security in that region and more people to people exchange, more cultural exchanges. All right. So this is a very, very significant summit as for our entire nation, not just Jammu and Kashmir, but strategically also it is very significant. All right. Because you also know that China is also investing in a lot of infrastructure in the Gilgit Baltistan region of the state, which is uh, currently the Pakistan occupied Kashmir. It is a highly disputed territory. And the road for uh, China Pakistan Economic Corridor, CPEC Road, is going through the Karakoram Range. India, sorry, India claims it to be its own territory. All right, so it is very important to invest more and more in private investments and infrastructure in that state. All right, <clears throat> so wherever you go, there is China in South China Sea, North, South, East, West. I mean, at least India and China has a threefold border, right? Western frontier, Northern frontier, and the Eastern frontier, but also in the oceanic region, also China is in increasing its dominance. So it is very, very crucial to counter these Chinese presence. China is like, it has become a horror for the entire world now, be it coronavirus or be it its military operations, right? I don't know what will happen. And especially in this uh, crisis time of Russia and Ukraine. All right, so new MSP of raw jute for 2022-2023 uh, season. Okay, so uh, you all should know who recommends uh, MSP and which government authority approves and finalizes the MSP. All right. Before going into that, first answer the question correctly, whether it is which of the options is your correct answer. All right. So the correct answer is 4,000. 750 per quintal for the 2022-23 season all right so cabinet uh, committee of economic affairs Cam cabinet committee on economic affairs basically it approves the recommendations it gives the final say to the recommendations given by CACB that is for commission on agricultural and crop production ag agricultural costs and prices right so cacp recommends msp for a total of 23 crops including cereals pulses oil seeds right and when it comes to commercial crops it also recommends msp for raw jute raw jute cotton de husk coconut All right. So every year CACP recommends MSP or MSP is uh, MSP uh, recommend karne ke basis kya hai? It has three pricing methods. Number one is F2, which is the direct cost uh, that is borne by the farmer to invest in his fields. For example, you are a farmer and you have uh, spent some amount on buying the seeds. You have some spent some amount on setting up your irrigation facilities. All right. So all these costs and even the fertilizer cost, all these costs are taken into account that are directly uh, borne by the farmer into CACP uh, by uh, the nomenclature of F2 costs, right? Now F2, we have A2 cost. A2 cost will be your imputed cost of farm labor, right? For example, if you are working on your own field, you will not get any income. For the time being, the, your source of income will be after six months after the harvest of the crop, right? Now, for the same time period, if you would be working in another field, you will be getting some daily wage, all right? So, that is your imputed family labor cost, okay? And the third and the most important measure is your capital cost, which is borne by the farmers, 
right? The opportunity cost, right? If the farmer had not invested on agriculture on his present land holding and rather would have opened a business, a small business enterprise and whatever the source of income would have incurred to him on uh, would that farmer would have earned on that uh, enterprise, that will be an opportunity cost, right? You all have studied economics, you all know what I'm talking about, okay? So, Jute Corporation of India will continue as the central government nodal agency to undertake price support operations and losses incurred, all right? And such operations are usually fully reimbursed by the center, okay? Very, very important. Now, we have a very important uh, news. Indian Army has organized exercise Suraksha Kavaj. Which division of Indian Army has organized uh, exercise Suraksha Kavaj? We have Rajputana Rifles, we have Dogra, we have Agnira, Agni Bas, Grenadiers and Kumau. Sorry. Okay, so the correct answer here is Agni Bas Division. Agni Bas Division is Indian Army ka, and it has conducted a joint exercise between Indian Army and Maharashtra Police. Right, so the counter terrorism task force of the indian army right and anti terror squad of maharashtra police maharashtra police anti terror squad both will collaborate on a joint exercise regarding evacuation drills traffic management drills right countering terrorist potential terror attack drills uh, if they occur in pune or in anywhere in the state of Maharashtra. All right, it is to harmonize the drill procedures undertaken by the army and the police. Okay, very, very important. Another exercise, another very important exercise uh, that is being conducted by the Indian Army, Dust Lick 2022, right? The, it is actually the second edition of Dust Lick. The first edition of Dust Lick was held in the year 2019, right? Now, which regiments of Indian Army has conducted Dust Lick, Dust Lick 2022? It has been conducted by the regiment, the Grenadiers Regiment, all right? Now, tell me, Dust Lake India Consi country ke saath conduct karta hai ye exercise. Now the correct answer is here Uzbekistan, right? Pehla edition jo hua tha, wo Tashkent mein hua tha. The first edition was held at Tashkent in Uzbekistan. Second edition is also being held in Uzbekistan at Yangyarik, right? A very interesting fact that you should know about Uzbekistan ki, that it is the sec only the second double landlocked country in the world after Liechtenstein. All right. So double landlocked country would mean what? Suppose this is Uzbekistan. So to reach the ocean, it is bordered by two countries before it surfaces any ocean. All right. Another thing you know about Aral Sea. Aral Sea is on the border between Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan. You all know that Aral Sea has reduced to 90% of its original uh, size because of global warming and unsustainable water usage. It is very, very important. All right, and it is the sec third edition of Exercise Dust Lick. All right. Which of the foreign, ba foreign banks has recently launched the Green Deposit Program for corporate clients in India? All right, so Green Deposit Program, as the name suggests, is a program towards sustainable development. All right, and which of the banks have recently launched the Green Deposit Banks? Answer it correctly and quickly. Okay, so the correct answer here is DBS Bank India has launched the Green Deposit Program for corporate clients. It will fund green industries and initiatives such as green building, right, wastewater management and clean transportation. So basically what is Green Deposit? It actually incentivizes private firms and uh, corporates to uh, deposit their surplus funds, surplus fund funds in the bank for green development green development technologies ke liye jitne bhi surplus funds hain private investors ke paas they actually deposit it in the banks all right it also encourage other customers to do the same right so this is a very important initiative another important fact here is another important terminologies uh, i think you should go and check it out 
you should learn more about green bonds a very similar initiative to uh, divert private capital uh, investments towards sustainable development okay last but the most important slide for today is the gdp growth forecast by india for india by fitch rating 2022 23 all right so the gdp growth forecast for india by the fitch rating answer it quickly whether it is 8.5% 7.8 6.7 9.1 10.3 all right so the correct answer here is 8.5% earlier earlier it projected a 10.3% growth but now it has been reduced to 8.5% okay likewise for the world growth rate also 3.5% it has been reduced from 4.2% from its earlier projection right omicron did not affect india as much as it is affecting other countries in the world today so it also predicts that the gdp growth is likely to pick up in the near future all right but the world growth rate has reduced from 4.2 to 3.5% okay but also uh, a very important uh, what are the important reasons for this is that see uh, russia is the largest uh, 10% of the world energy supply is 10% uh, of the world's energy supply is, is provided by russia including uh, natural gas all right and the ongoing russian ukraine crisis and the world sanctions on russia are not going to be uh, relieved very very quickly or any time soon in future so because of the higher costs of energy these days it will uh, be a burden, burden on the pocket of the consumer right the consumption expenditure will increase and obviously then the gdp growth rate will be definitely be affected all right so this was it for today in case you have any doubt most welcome in the comments thank you so much for watching the video till the end do check out about our crash course uh, for rbi grade b and the pdf for today's current affairs uh, will be shared on our telegram channel so please do check that also out thank you so much for watching take care and bye bye